Suzanne Collins, who wrote the books, um, uh, the Hunger Games, said that her main goal in writing them was to help young people understand and think about war and uh, whether or not, you know, what's good in war, what, are there things that are allowed in war and things that are not. Um, the, uh, the third book is especially uh, about just war. And, and when I was reading this, I taught seniors the last two years, and so when I was reading this third book, it was like reading the catechism on just war, the, the issues that she was raising in here. Um, one of the things that, that is going on in there is that uh, they're making traps for people and bombs, and, and they're in a war, obviously. And Katniss, if you don't know, Katniss is the hero, heroine, all right, of the whole story. And one of the people on her team, on her side, uh, is, is trying to is deciding to make this bomb where a small explosion goes off and kills a couple people, and then all the medical people come and all the people in the surrounding area would come to try and help them, and then a second bigger bomb goes off, killing all of those people. Okay, and she says something about that. Uh, Katniss is talking to her friend about that idea. She said that seems to be crossing some kind of line. So anything goes. And that's what I want us to think about. That's what just war theory is partly about. Does anything go in war? In the book here, there's a town, an entire city, that is building war materials for the bad, the other team, the other side of the war, the bad guys. Okay? The, the good side, Katniss's side, blows that entire town up. Blows that entire town up. What's the rationale? It might save lives. It's probably going to save lives down the road, right? Because they're going to now that nobody can make those tanks and stuff. Okay. She says again about that. She says that kind of thinking could turn it into. You could turn that into an argument for killing anyone at any time. You could justify lots of things. For example, I could kill all of you and say, well, I was a little worried that one of them might kill me someday. This is from the Catechism, that first paragraph. We're going to take them. There's three chunks here that I'm going to go over really quickly with you. The first chunk at the very top, the church says that um, the mere fact, you can look at the second sentence there, the mere fact that war has regrettably broken out does not mean that everything becomes licit between the warring parties. Okay? I don't want you to write underneath there what that means in your own words. Try and do it in five or six. Something to the effect of, I can't do whatever I want during war. Non-combatants, this is again from the catechism, non-combatants, <coughs> wounded soldiers, and prisoners must be respected and treated humanely. What especially is that referring to or saying that we cannot do? <coughs> yeah. Torture. Torture. Exactly. Exactly. So you might want to write that in, and that's referring to torture. Okay? And it's also saying that somebody buried in a bunker, you know, in, in a foxhole over there shooting at me is different than a wounded soldier, somebody who doesn't, you know, if he doesn't have a gun and I've shot, you know, I shot his arm off or something like that. I can't walk over and then shoot him in the head. He's different now. He's a wounded uh, person who can't defend himself. The, the game, the rules change, is kind of what the, what the catechism is saying, and we acknowledge that in the United States. Okay. The other thing I want you to underline there is the third sentence. Okay. The, not the whole thing. Just blind obedience does not excuse. Blind obedience does not excuse. That's really important, and that's something that we in America continue to struggle with. You know, how do we how do you, you have to have, as a military person, you have to have your troop, your, your people that are under you, following exactly your orders. You can't say, hey, you as the troops decide, you know, well, boy, do I really want to go do that or not? Okay, let's take a vote. No, you can't take votes. But at the same time, this is also saying, you as a soldier cannot just say, oh, well, my boss told me to torture him, or her, or them. Or my boss told me to go in and kill all the women in the town at night, shooting them in the head. You can't just appeal to blind obedience, even if you're in the military. So that's a really helpful principle for us uh, to be aware of.
these are the four criteria, and I want you to write that down to, to the left there. Four criteria for just war. The damage inflicted by the aggressor on the nation or community of nations must be lasting, grave, and certain. Okay? That's to say this. It has to be the case that if somebody invades or attacks my country, that invasion has to be something that is clearly a permanent thing or a permanent decision to continue attacking me. Number two, the second criteria. All other means of putting an end to it must have been shown to be impractical or ineffective. What other things ought we to try first? Treaties, talking, diplomats, Congress, United States, all those things, exactly. Number three, there must be serious prospects of success. There must be serious prospects of success. That's pretty self-explanatory. Number four, the use of arms must not produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated. The power of modern means of destruction weighs very heavily in evaluating this condition. What is modern means of destruction? What are they referring to there? Bombs, especially nuclear. Okay? Nuclear bombs ought especially to be considered, and I think the church would basically say there is no justification ever for the lighting of a nuclear, or whatever you call it, the, uh, the use of nuclear weapons. But just war theory is also there to help guide individual or smaller actions within the war. And it's what I want you to write down underneath there is really important. This is the last thing. Okay? There can be, there can be, I'll write up here too. There can be unjust actions during just wars. And also, there can be just actions during unjust wars.